Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. Okay, X, I never thought I'd make one of these things, but I just asked some friends of mine if this happened, and they said they remember it too. So here goes nothing. Be me, an 11-year-old Boy Scout on a camping trip with other idiots. We were all about 11 at the time and doing Cub Scouts or Boy Scouts things I can't remember which it was at the time. Judge me. We were doing a camp out at my family's ranch. Ranch is in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Like really out in the hill country around 30 miles out of San Marcos and around 60 miles out of Austin. Anyway, we decided to have a camp out there in this valley. The valley had a river right next to it and was pretty dope. While the grown-ups talked and got drunk, we all decided to explore the many paths that were next to the river. There were these rock formations everywhere and caves that my mom said had Indians in them at one time. She said Comanches or some other tribe would stay there before attacking some settlers. We fished and learned about geology or something. I can't really remember. Basically the whole day went by without a hitch and I can barely remember anything other than us making fun of this kid in our troop. There's usually at least one or two in every scout troop. Eventually it got dark and a few of us wanted to go back to the Indian rocks at night because we were trying to show off to each other how brave we were. Me and a few other homies start to walk there along the trail. It's windy so every once in a while the trees shake and start making a load of noise. It's really creepy when it takes you off guard. We make it to the caves and rocks and stuff, we are really far away from camp so we are starting to get spooked. Me and bro one start looking for fossils in the rocks, cause we're dumb. Other bros are looking around doing who knows what. Another one of my close bros will call him bro two goes off behind this tree to piss or something. Me and bro one hear the most agonized scream from behind us. Scream sounds like someone about to cry, not the scream of pain. Me and bro one sprint to our homies and see bro two looking like traumatized as hell other bros gather around. Bro two has his mouth open in this pained expression of horror like one of those thousand yard stare. He has his eyes locked on this one spot of the tree line at the top of the hill and wouldn't look away even when we spoke to him. We all look at where he was looking with our flashlights, the kind that are strapped to Ur forehead. Just for a second I see it. It must have been an elbow or some kind of limb or something. Holy shit dot JPG. It was all white and it was sunken in like there was no meat on it. Just skin over bone and ligament. I see its arm, shoulder and foot as it skitters like a bug into the brush. The best way I can get you to visualize it is to picture a pale man but stretched into the shape of a praying mantis, the messed up frontal arms and everything. If you live in West Texas, you know how thick this brush and cactus is and how something can just disappear in it, despite how short it seems. We hear this scuttling of the brush and it disappears. A few of us see it. We start to mentally panic. This feeling of dread I've only ever gotten from nightmares sinks over me as we question bro too. We ask bro too what the hell did he see and what the hell we see. He can't say anything like his mind can't comprehend it. Whatever we saw a glimpse of, he saw the whole thing, and I guess it scared him. We further question bro too and eventually it starts to become near interrogation as we are so desperate for any grasp on what the hell we saw. Bro too just says it looked at me like a dumbass all the while still looking at the brush. I remember we all slowly began to herd back to camp immediately after that. We didn't need any more explanation than that. In fact, I don't think we even wanted any more explanation. It was all just too much to grasp. We went back and tried to forget about what had happened. We played a game of tag, but instead of tagging you, just push people to the ground and yell moop. It was stupid, but helped us keep our mind off of it. Bro 2 didn't play with us. He just went back to his tent. That weirded us out, but we tried not to think about it. My tent flooded during the night and I got to sleep in my family's ranch house. I felt like a coward, but I was thankful I got to be out of the valley. That was the end of it. Bro 2 always avoids talking about it whenever we bring it up, which still weirds us out to this day because he's usually a really sociable guy. I'm spending spring break at the ranch house right now and it reminded me of what happened six years ago. I called up Bro 1 and asked him about it to see if it really happened at all and he confirmed it so I know this is real. I don't know how I feel about being here anymore after writing this, as I'm starting to remember how scary this shit was. Good read. Damn, that sounds wild. Do you keep close with Bro 2? And after it happened, did you tell anyone else? Or was it just you three that know? Yeah, Bro 2 and I are still really good friends, but every time I ask him about it, he dodges the question. I just asked him about it now and he continues to dodge it.
What do you mean, stretched like a praying mantis, and the messed up arms? Were the arms bended twice like a praying mantis? And was the torso long and only two hind legs, or four like a praying mantis? Just want a better description. All right, yeah, it had two legs and these weird ass arms that went backward like those of a mantis. That is the elbow joint bends backwards instead of forwards. They were also very long and bony. I can draw a picture if you need a better image, but I'm a shitty artist, so... This my shitty drawing, sorry for the severe autism. This sounds almost exactly like a scenario I had, right down to the brother who won't admit it anymore, except I live in Minnesota and didn't really see what it was. Be me, eight or nine, live in a wooded area next to a little town. Wildlife and pets everywhere, I'm used to all kinds of animals. Old house, old property, I'm used to all kinds of oddities. Out in a golden red twilight in the pine forest. With my brother, whom I don't really like, golden sunlight beams through the red trees. Suddenly a great shadow passes between the trees, blotting out the sunlight. Only for a split second, then it was gone. Both just stand there, feeling mortified. Not ten seconds later, an awful, female-pitched shriek. Never heard anything like it before or since. We book it back to the house, 200 yards in about 10 seconds. People shrug and tell us not to go out there for a few days in case of animals. We eventually stopped talking about it because no one cared. I questioned him just a few weeks ago, although he only says that we stood there and got scared for some reason. But he tries to be an insufferable tough guy now and wouldn't ever admit how scared we felt over it in the first place. Suddenly a great shadow passes between the trees, blotting out the sunlight. Man, this reminded me of something that happened about a month ago. Really short story, but was very strange at the time. Be me, live in the middle of a small city in Brazil, talking to dad in the kitchen about 2 p.m. Suddenly the sun goes dark, complete darkness for about half a second, maybe less. Ask dad if he saw it, he confirms. First time I saw something like that, it couldn't have been a cloud, no way it would make everything completely dark like that and for such a short time. I wondered if I just blinked, but Dad saw it too, so it's unlikely. Ever been perfectly in the shadow of a plane 10,000 feet high going 400 miles per hour? Sounds about the same. I don't know about the other guy, but I have one time when I was out in the country with some buddies near a local Air Force base in Northern California. I've seen some old B-52s fly out of there, low and slow, going to air shows and the like. But Oakland is different. The airport there is down on the water, literally on landfill, and the planes fly up and out over the bay to gain altitude there, not over neighborhoods and homes. So you hear a bit of noise, but it's not deafening at all. We were far away up in the hills, with 95% of the city between us and the airport, with only a few more houses and then miles of parkland and reservoirs and stuff behind us. When planes flew over that neighborhood where we were, they'd be way the fuck up by then and the noise was very soft and distant. You certainly wouldn't experience a shadow. And like I said, we went outside to look and there was nothing overhead. We thought maybe a blimp because they are big, low and quiet, but they are also slow and any such craft as that would still have been in sight. There was nothing. I'll always wonder about that. Maybe a timeline switch? This is something which has been happening now and then inexplicably for many years. I've read other accounts of similar phenomena here quite a few times. Be me back in the 1990s living in Oakland, California, up in the hills visiting my GF and her elderly dad. He's not back from errands yet, so we're just chilling while we wait to go out to supper. They lived in this nice old Spanish-style house with a huge sunlit living room, windows all around. I'm just sitting on the couch and my girlfriend is walking into the room with a drink for me when all of a sudden, the room goes completely dark, like the biggest cloud you could ever imagine just blotted out the sun completely. Total darkness for maybe half a second, just like what happened to you. Then the sunlight returns and everything is just as it was. My girlfriend and I are staring at each other. Neither of us wants to say something first. Finally, I take the plunge. What the hell just happened? Did the sun like blink just now? Did you see that too? She nods. Yeah, I saw it too. WTF. Of one mind, we both turn and run outside. We're up at the top of a hill we can see for miles all the way down to the bay and all around us not a cloud in sight, nor a big balloon or blimp or anything. Nothing at all. We quietly go back inside and drink a lot and don't talk about it ever again. First time actually posting, so here goes, I guess. Live in Texas too. My great aunt had a big ass ranch somewhere. 
but it's been years and she passed away a while back. The house itself was down a road from the main road, and not many people drove there anyways. There's also a lake a bit further into the ranch, but you have to go through a small bit of woods to reach it. Second day there, a few years back, we were riding her four-wheeler. I felt pretty cool back then. It was a large clearing with some brush and tall grass scattered around. Being the kid I was, I stayed up late and shit. Had a room that looked further into the ranch at the back of the house. Now there was a shed around the back too. For a quick map, my room was back right. Shed was around back left and disconnected from the house. Back porch was right in between. Between my window and the porch, you can only really see the outside of the porch or maybe a bit of the side, but the light has to be turned on from inside. I didn't have a phone as a kid, so I watched movies on a mini laptop TV thing. I also had no concept of the ingenious art of headphones. So night one, right after we got there, nothing happened. Night two though, after driving the forklift around and walking to the pond lake thing, I was in bed watching a movie with my sound low. I move around a lot trying to get comfortable every minute or two, and I turn to lay on my elbow which puts me facing the window, and I look up after hearing rustling. Nothing too big, but I did look through the window and maybe make out something in the dark. Might have been my mind playing tricks on me though. Anyways, next day, my aunt and I are messing around that pond, cause she has a boat in it. She goes back to the shed while I stay near the boat under strict instruction not to touch anything. So of course I got on the boat and looked at some of the controls and buttons. I'm not too keen on types of boats or stuff, but it was a jet ski or something. Either way, she left for the shed, maybe a five minute walk, but if you're waiting on someone, it feels like 10 or 15. Now I don't think she had animals on that ranch, but there were a lot of rustling trees and bushes on the other side of this lake the three IQ brat that I decided to take a good long stare at it. What feels, again, like 15 minutes of staring, looking for anything that could be making noise, is eventually cut short by my aunt coming back. I promptly forgot about it as it was overwritten by the sheer fun of being on a speedboat. Asked her about it though and she said I was watching too many movies at night and it's probably a raccoon or whatever, semi-indigenous wildlife stayed in those parts. Night three, nothing happens, but she said her dog got the shit scared out of her that morning by something. Next day, we were out of the house doing random unimportant stuff. Fact of the matter is, some scratches were found on the shed when we got back. Night four, some freaky shit happens. Late night, about to sleep when I hear scratching at the back porch. So to see my porch, you'd have to get a weird angle and be in full view of the window. I look out and see some kind of movement in the dark. What matters is, I think it saw me too. Since right after seeing that I covered up with my armor class 21 blanket and was scared for dear life, be it my imagination or my imagination come to life. Whatever the hell it is scratches around and on the window a bit and proceeds to tap on it. I laid there for a good while and sometimes it would stop for a couple minutes, sometimes it would restart right before I could go back to sleep. Woke up late cause no sleep is real and tell my aunt and grandmother that something was outside my window, like the little wuss I am, they reaffirmed to me that it might have been a stray dog or cat wanting food. Oh, okay, this is fine, it's all right. Later that night, I tried to go to bed early to avoid the shit show that might be my blankets. Luckily, it worked for me not so much as for the dog that my aunt put out that night, just in case. The dog was barking up a storm a couple hours after I went to bed, around the side in front of the house. Aunt woke up and told me some animal was lurking around, and she told us it'd be best if we cut off that spring break there and head home. Last one, sorry. My aunt and grandmother had a long, long chat while I was in the car right before we left. My grandmother is a nice old lady, but she gets pretty quiet when something serious comes up. I've asked her about it since said aunt passed away, but she only told me that some animal almost attacked the dog and my aunt got a good look at it. Never described it to me, but said 
She'd never seen something like that while living on that ranch. My mundane yet terrifying story. Be around 14. Me and four friends decided to pitch a tent in my backyard by the fire pit and camp out one summer night. Around 11 p.m. it starts drizzling, so we put out the fire and head into the tent. We shoot the shit for a bit and eventually decide on playing ghosts in the graveyard throughout the neighborhood. One friend was tired and a coward, so he decided to stay in the tent and sleep. We were fairly loud, and we swear to this day that this gained someone's attention. A typical white picket fence suburb is nothing out of the normal. We run throughout a sub until around 2.30. We get back, and friend is wide awake, says we kept him up with all of our running and yelling outside the tent. All of us decided to go to bed as it was raining pretty hard out now. Around 3.30, me and one other friend are up and are whispering for a bit. Suddenly, I hear the sound of footsteps outside of the tent. Those slow, wet, grass-type footsteps don't know who it could possibly be. Sounds like they're traveling around the tent observing what's happening. We both go dead silent as something begins brushing up the sides of the tent. Footsteps sound like they broke out into a dead sprint away from the tent and literally wake everyone up. Me and friends silently stay up and elect if we want to just book it inside. Wait about 45 minutes, the longest time of my life. And I rip open the tent and bolt to the back of the house. Turn on the porch light and everyone eventually follows and we sleep inside. I don't know if it was an angry neighbor or someone screwing with us, but I don't think I've ever sat quieter in my entire life than that moment. We think it might have just been an older neighbor kid trying to mess with us, but deep down I think it could have been someone with malicious intent who decided against it after realizing the house was so close and there was more than a few kids. This is a bizarre incident that happened to my family. I'm a 50-year-old man from Peru, and when I was young my family, two sisters, mother and father, used to live in a house in a rural village next door to my uncle. We all slept in the same room with separate beds and we didn't have electricity. Also, there was only one door to the bedroom and one window which we kept closed at night. So one night, I woke up to the sound of my sister, Sister One, screaming. She was shouting that someone was in the room and touching her thigh. My dad got up and lit a candle, but there was no one in the room, doors and windows closed. We said she had been dreaming, so we went back to sleep. The following night, the same incident happened again. My sister woke up screaming, saying someone was moving their hands slowly up her thigh. Dad lights the candle, but no one is there. The following night, my other sister, Sister 2, sleeps in her bed with Sister 1. Sister 2 wakes up screaming that someone is touching her thigh. Dad checks the room with a candle again, but nothing. This is when we all start to get a little concerned, but my parents think my sisters are just playing a very weird joke on them. The following night, my mother sleeps in my sister's bed, and my sisters sleep with my dad. In the middle of the night, my mum wakes up screaming that someone is touching her thigh. Now my parents are super freaked out, but once again there was nothing in the room, all doors and windows closed. My dad asks everyone to leave the house and stay with my uncle next door, and he decides to sleep in my sister's bed in the house alone. This is where things get so strange and unexplained to me. That night, we woke up to the sounds of my dad shouting for my uncle to help him. My uncle runs next door, lights a candle, and finds my dad lying on the floor, out of breath, with red marks on his chest and face. This is my dad's story of what happened. He said he was sleeping when he woke up in the night to a hand touching his thigh, but he didn't react immediately. He waited, and the hand began to move higher and higher up his thigh towards his genitals. As the hand got very close, he grabbed it, and he says he grabbed onto a very hairy arm, too hairy to be human. He held onto the creature as long as he could. He said it was very large and strong, but it scratched him lightly during the struggle, and he couldn't hold on. But the creature didn't run away or open a door or window. There was just silence after that. I saw the redness on my dad and believed the story entirely. I was the only one to never experience anything. After this incident, my dad and uncle stayed in the house, but the creature never came back. We all returned to sleeping in that room eventually and never had another issue. Any idea what it could have been? The area is not known for monkeys, certainly not large ones, and I don't know how a monkey could have entered the room every night and then left with no noise. 
but that's the most likely explanation I can think of. There was no way to enter the room except a closed door and closed locked window. When I was 11 years old, my younger brothers, cousins, friends and I were playing with a kite. It was March, so it was still a bit cold. My cousin, who was looking down the road, said, Who's that guy watching us over there? We all looked and we were like we didn't know who it was. But whatever or whoever it was, he was really big. He was taller than our little fence pole, which came up to him about mid-chest. The fence pole, we later found out, was about five feet something. He looked kind of hairy. He had no neck. He had really long arms. He watched us, and every now and then he'd lean over. Then he'd stand back up and watch us some more. We quickly pulled back our kite. It then started to snow. One of my little brothers said, I'm gonna go tell Dad. The hairy man then ran into the trees, so it disappeared just in a blink of an eye. Back then, we had never heard of Sasquatch or Bigfoot, but we had heard of the Boogeyman, the monster, and you know our parents scared us with. It was 1967. That's when there were more sightings. That's when I first heard people calling the creatures the furry ones. One evening, my brother was up in a basin area near our home. He was hunting on horseback. At dusk, he started to head home, but he wanted to look at another area before he did so. He rides over this ridge. He said everything happened in a split second. As he came over the ridge, he saw the horse's ears perk up and then it stopped moving. A Bigfoot was sitting down there and he was eating something. It looked up at my brother and the look on its face was alarming, like it had seen something terrifying. The Bigfoot got on all fours, leaped four times and was suddenly gone like it had vanished. The horse was startled and my brother almost fell off. He grabbed the horse's neck and they took off down to the foothills. He said he couldn't stop his horse until they reached home. This old rancher lived out in the canyon area by the creek. He said that he came home to his trailer late one night. He had an old car sitting along the road to his trailer. He saw something huge duck behind the old car. The rancher starts panicking. Then this huge creature tried to back out, but the rancher's headlight picked it up. It was really big, but it wasn't fast, but it did get away. The next day he found two of his horses lying dead in the nearby gully. Their necks were all ripped out. Their tail end areas were also ripped open. Whatever killed them had to have been fast to catch the horses. My sister lived by the river and a lot of times their horses were being bothered by something. There would be a bad odor outside. One night, while their uncle was watching the kids, they said something climbed on the top of the house and it was big. It was walking around and jumping. They got really scared of it. Their uncle later got them together in the middle of the room. The kids were crying. He had his rifle and was aiming at the door. This creature was jumping hard on the roof. Then my sister came home and that thing jumped off the house and took off. When she opened the door, they were facing a rifle aimed at them. The kids were hysterical. That creature would show up several more times and it always got onto the roof and jumped up and down scaring everyone in the house. One day she called my uncle while the creature was there. He and his friend drove over and saw the creature trying to run away. They chased after it in the truck and shot at it a few times. After that, the creature never returned. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes. Midnight Central Time. Remember to check out the Odyssey page in the description for a second archive of the channel's videos.